Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Simply Kinder, and I am so excited to um, chat with you today about the first day of kindergarten. It's an exciting time for parents. It's an exciting time for students. It's a very, very, very busy, 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 busy time for teachers. And so we are going to chat all things first day today because I made a ton of mistakes when I uh, was teaching kindergarten. And I just, I love sharing those with everybody because I don't know, I think, in, I feel like in teaching, like you never are a master at teaching. It's every year you learn something different. And there was this one year where I had this like huge aha moment. And I was like, what am I doing to myself? Like, what exactly am I doing? <laughs> Today we're talking all about the first day of kindergarten. And I, I admit, my first few years teaching, I would script out exactly what I wanted to say on the first day. And I would literally plan handprint crafts, cut and glue activities. We would, I would plan a book for every single section of the day. I would think to myself, well, I want to start off with my structure. So let's start off with my blocks. So from this time to this time is calendar and this time to this time is literacy and this time to this time is, is literacy centers. And so it's, I would go into the first day and I would leave my day looking like that. True story. There would be stuff everywhere. My hair would be on top of my head. There would be things randomly placed in my hair. It would just be crazy. So I sort of let things go. And I decided, okay, well, instead of scripting out my first day, I'm going to just put bullet parts, like bullets. And I'm going to say during this time, I want to make sure I do X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. And during this time, I would do X, Y, and Z, and X, Y, and Z. And it lightened the load a little bit, but it really didn't. It really didn't leave me as a teacher feeling fulfilled at the end of the day that I was the happiest, peppiest, most energetic. You know, it's the first day of kindergarten. It's a big deal. And these kids are excited, most of them. And parents are excited and they're everybody's a little bit scared. And so you need your energy. And I was spending all my energy trying to figure out how do I get all this stuff into one day? And so one day I, or one year, I was just like, forget it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to just do exactly what I know is going to happen on the first day. And that is basically to practice all the things, all the things. The entire day is just welcome to school. Let's practice welcome to school. So I jokingly have this little, you know, image that takes you through the first day, but I want to go through it because there's lots of parts in there and lots of things in there that I do that kind of might make your day a little bit easier. So um, right off the bat, um, you kind of sometimes don't have control over how you get your students. Are you going to get your students um, on the playground? Are they going to be welcomed in the classroom? Are they going to be allowed to have their parents in? Those, a lot of times those aren't things that we have any control over. Our administration um, sets that standard for us. So once you get into your space, um, this is where I go into console parents in student mode. So I personally, I welcome my families in and um, I want them to stay. I don't want them to leave because during that first 20 to 30 minutes of kindergarten on the very number one day of school, you're going to have students who cry. You're going to have new students. You're going to have students who don't know how to stay in a seat, even though you've asked them to stay in a seat. Um, you're going to have students who are wondering what to do next. And for me, I feel like the more adult bodies I have in that space, the easier it is for me to welcome that new student who's at my door or to tell that parent who's at that door, I remember your child's on the bus. I will make sure your child gets on the bus. If you're having to manage 27 kids at their seats, you can't take care of those things in a calm, rational way. So for me, I always 
let them stay. So there was this one year where it was, I was at a new school and my principal came in and she's like, Miss Kadar, it is uh, 8.32, school started at eight. She's like, you still have all these parents in here. Do you want me to get rid of them for you? And I was like, no, okay, I'll let them go when I'm ready. Because what I do is I leave them there until everything calms down. And then I take a deep breath. I literally stand at the front and I take a deep breath and I kind of regroup myself because it is extremely chaotic. And I don't know, you guys tell me in the comments, like, is it chaotic for you too? Because it's, there's so much going on and there's students who register at the last minute and there's students who don't know where they're going. There's students whose parents put them on the bus and just send them to school who didn't know how to get to your classroom. It's, it's chaotic. And so I need the help and I will stand at the front and I'll just take a deep breath, like quietly. And I'll move on with my day when I'm ready. And so how I do that is I will say, okay, boys and girls, everybody wave goodbye to your parents and give them a giant kiss. And we all give a giant kiss to our families. And that's kind of a, a polite cue that it's your time to leave and our time to continue without you. So I don't know about you guys as a parent, but me as a kindergarten teacher, I love kindergarten. And so I wanted to be in my kids' classrooms for just a few moments, just to kind of observe and see and share in the excitement. And yet, you know, as a teacher, when you have those parents who stay, how do you kind of push them along so that you can go along with your day? It's a great trick. You just say, okay, everybody, it's time to start our day. Wave goodbye to all the families in the room and everybody get ready. Let's blow a great big giant kiss and you blow them a kiss, and they all kind of get the clue, and they walk away. So it works out fantastically. Fantastically, it's a great trip. Now, of course, you might have like a hysterical crier, or you might have someone who needs um, help separating and all of that, but you, um, you know, you, we're gonna talk about this tip in a second. You will have your students at your desk doing something that doesn't have an end, so they will be there so that you can help those transitions happen, and um, yeah, so. You will reassure the students that the parents will come back because they are five. Some of them may even be four. Um, and so some of them have never been to school before. So you will basically, it's okay, they're gonna come back. They're gonna come get you, I promise. You will be fine until they come and get you. Then you're gonna talk about the number one most important thing. And I don't know if it's just me, you guys tell me, what is your number one most important thing? But for me, I need everybody to stay in their seats and I need everybody to raise their hand. Because what will happen is if you don't establish that right off the bat, you will get hundreds of kindergartners. Okay, you only have like 27 in your class, but you'll get them just walking up to you and you'll they'll ask you questions and they'll they don't understand. Sit in your seat and raise your hand. And so we talk about that first thing because I can't help anybody if I can't hear anybody. <laughs> so that's my number one most important um, thing that I teach right off the bat. Then we talk about the bathroom. And so you all know when you talk about the bathroom, what's going to happen is everybody's going to say, I have to go to the bathroom. I have to go to the bathroom. So it's almost like we take a bathroom break right as we talk about it. So, oh, look at that. So and so has to go to the bathroom. Let's practice this. What do you do when you go to the bathroom? Raise your hand. Oh, thank you for raising your hand, so and so. You may go to the bathroom and you let him get up and go to the restroom now. I consider myself a very lucky teacher because I have never had a bathroom in my classroom. <laughs> and I see some of the things that you all deal with, with um, bathrooms in kindergarten and preschool. And I almost consider that to be a blessing because, I don't know, basically what happens is when we practice, we all get up and we walk to the bathroom outside of our door. So that way they know you walk in the hallway quietly, you do this, you do that, you come straight back, all of that. So you just kind of got to establish your routine. Um, a friend of mine, her classroom does not have a lock on her bathroom door in her bathroom. And so they just took a red and a green piece of construction paper and laminated it together and put a rubber band on it. And then they put the rubber band on the doorknob. So then they turn it to red when a student walks in. And then when the student leaves, they turn it back around. And that's how everybody knows that it's safe to go in the restroom. Um, I don't know, not safe, but like appropriate to go in the restroom. So teach them how to go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom, okay? You're probably gonna have recess. So after you talk about the bathroom, you're gonna go into recess. How do we line up for recess? What is recess? 
How do we act at recess? What do we do when the whistle blows at recess? That is a very hard concept for a lot of students. They don't, they've never been in an environment where somebody blows a whistle and everybody has to line up. It just has not been something they've experienced. So we spend, it'll be nine o'clock in the morning. They've just got there. We go outside, we play for two minutes. I blow the whistle, they run the line. I say, great job, let's try it again. They go play, I blow the whistle, they come back to line. They go play, I blow the whistle, they come to the line. And I give them, like eventually I give them like a minute or you know, more than a minute or two to play. But they need that, they're excited. They see this giant playground, they wanna go play on it. But we have to establish that when it's actually recess time that um, they know what that whistle means. Another thing I do with recess time, and I did not grab any, I should have, I have those little wristbands the first week of school, um, and I get my class a certain color, so my class will all be red or blue or yellow or green. I typically use yellow for some reason, um, but you know, just the little rubber bracelets, and so when your students go out to recess, I'm horrible with names, and I'm horrible with remembering things, and so... I have a hard time the first like week or so of school remembering who is my student. So I will make them, when they go out to recess, I will make them go outside with a yellow wristband on. So that way I can just look quickly and see, oh, the child on the slide, that's mine, I'll go grab them. You know, um, it just helps. I'm a visual person, so I like to be able to just glance and say, oh, that's mine. Ooh, that's, and granted, if it wasn't my student, I would still go over there and help, but it just, it's helpful to know who the students are in your class with those little wristbands. So come in from recess, right after recess, guess what time it almost is? It's almost lunchtime. So we sit down at the carpet and I bring my tray and we talk about, this is lunch. When you go to lunch, I'm going to leave you. It's going to be okay. You're gonna get your lunch, you're gonna hold your tray. You're gonna put your milk on your tray. You're gonna open, I show them how to open the milk. And some schools I've been at, I've been lucky enough to be able to bring milk in before so we can practice in the morning or I've had breakfast in the classroom. So yeah, so we practice lunch and we talk about it and we, you know, we just talk about it. And then after lunch, guess what? You're going to recess and you remembered how to line up. I'm gonna be looking to see who can line up the way that we practice? And you remind them those things. And then when I get to the cafeteria, I'll remind the teacher there or whoever, if they found a duty, I'll say, hey, my students know. So right before you release them, if you could just remind them that when the whistle blows, you need to line up, they'll, they've practiced that. So they know what to do. Let's go to lunch. Then you come back from lunch. You gotta calm down from lunch because they've been running like crazy and they're so excited. They're starting to get a little bit tired, but they're super, super excited. So you let them calm down. So we will literally either do some sort of calming movement, a calming song. Sometimes we'll just put our heads down, um, Arizona. So August is extremely hot and extremely humid. So a lot of times our bodies literally need to cool down and they need to get drinks um, or they can get sick. Um, so we come in, we cool down. Then the questions start. Okay, they've already started before lunch, but now the question will start because they're getting tired and they wanna know when it's time to go home. So we will answer the question when it's time to go home. And then we'll talk about, hmm, we have still to do our specials class and maybe a little lesson for the day. So it's kind of like a lot for them. So they, you know, if you've never been in school, if you've only been in half day, or if you haven't had any school experience at all, then it's tricky to understand that. So we will talk about that. This is the part of the day where I will try really, 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 really hard to fit a book in because they need that time to calm down. They need that time to center and they need to read books. So, I mean, all day, every day is what you should be doing with literacy with your kindergartners. So it's a great time to just read a book and just sit and enjoy the time with them. After you read a story, I will also try the first day. I used to try and do handprint crafts and all this crazy stuff. I will put out like just manipulatives for the kids and I will put them at the different tables and I will say, this is the block table, this is the puzzle table, this is the Lego table, blah, 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 blah. And I will, I will literally, we don't start our center rotations yet, 
but I will say, you're gonna sit at this table, you're gonna sit at this table, you're gonna, and I will, I will literally tell them where to go and where to sit. And I will make sure they get like five to 10 minutes at each table. Now, I like to do this because number one, it sets the precedence that you're gonna have a little bit of independence here, but I also love to do a first day project. And usually the first day project I do will be something along the lines of just having them write their name um, or having them um, draw a picture. Some years I'll have them do a handprint on their name um, with ink instead of paint because ink comes off quicker and it's I can give them a wipey and they can wipe it super quick. Um, during this time is when they also get to kind of explore the classroom. So it's up to you and your comfort level and how you have your center set up. Like some years at some schools I would have physical centers that they could go to and I would let them go to the centers at that time. Um, but we don't start actual center rotations yet, but they want to play. They're excited to be there. And we put them in this room and they're like, oh, but you can't touch anything. So it's exciting for them. So we do a little bit of exploration and manip manip uh, with manipulatives that are seen. Nothing major, nothing they can destroy, nothing like that. So after that, we go into talking about specials because typically we're everywhere I've taught, it's always been specials at the end of the day. So... Um, yeah, so before I do that, this is another little trick that I learned after many, many, many years, is we pack our bags to go home before we go to specials because, I don't know, it's just, it makes me feel better to know that they're packed up and ready to go before they go. Like before, before I, I hate that rushed out the door feeling and it's gonna be times 182 on the first day of school because they're not gonna know what to do. And a lot of times some kids have to go with this teacher and some kids have to go with this teacher. And so I just like to be packed and ready. So we put our folders in our bag, we put any papers in our bag, we put our lunch boxes in our bag, we put our bags in our back of our seats. Um, depending on where they're stored, we will literally move them to the back of our seats then. And then that way we're ready. So we don't have to rush. So the end of the day doesn't have to be chaotic. So we will talk about specials. I will take them to specials. I will reassure them that I will pick them up from specials. Um, because a lot of times students don't understand that you're not the only teacher. And so they have to understand that, you know, you might be with this teacher, you might be with that teacher, you might be in the cafeteria, you might be, you know, you're not gonna be with them all the time. And I think we teach kids that you're gonna be with Miss So-and-so and then they're not, or Mr. So-and-so, and then they're really not the whole day and it can be a little bit scary and overwhelming for them. So we go to specials, we come back, after we come back, my day usually always had an hour there um, or 30, 45 minutes. We would talk about dismissal. We would practice dismissal. We would go see the dismissal spots. We would practice lining up for dismissal. Um, a lot of the, a few of the schools that I worked at, we would actually practice with the other teachers because it's hard and it's tricky. And um, to get that many kindergartens, one school I taught at, we had 13 kindergarten classrooms and we averaged about 25 to 30 students in a class. So it was a lot of bodies to move at the end of the day and make sure that they're safe. And so you really wanna carve out that time to talk about dismissal and make sure that everybody knows where they're going. And um, I don't know, so then you go home. I have pack up at the end there. We usually pack up earlier in the day and then you go home. And so that leaves us to some tips that I have. So the first tip I shared with you is invite your parents to stay. More help, the merrier. Take a deep breath and when you're ready to let them go, have them, just have them wave goodbye and they'll, they'll get the clue. Second tip is that little chart up there on the top. So the first week of school, um, it, transportation tends to change a little bit and so um, that's an old, old, old photo that I literally grabbed like 15 minutes before this started and it's not large enough for you to see, but those little, those little post-its on it are those little itty bitty index size like header, like file folder header logos. And so what I'll do is I will um, put those under the section that they go and then as the parents bring them, I will always, it's just part of my natural vocabulary, I will say, oh, make sure you check the chart, make sure how your student is going home today is listed on the chart. So that way, when I walk out the door, I have it and I will even take a picture of it um, just so that I have it. Take your dismissal cards, take everything with you because somebody will radio somebody because there has something happened to a student. Hopefully that won't happen, but students get displaced and the lines merge together and y'all know how it is. So um, I don't know, I just, it made me feel more comfortable for the first few days for those students who did have 
ways home that were changing that I made them double check if they dropped their student off in the morning um, that they that they were marked appropriately. And then I would literally, at the end of the day, I would look at it based off the notes from the parents of what they'd sent and I'd make sure my chart was set for the next day. Um, dismissal scares me. It really, really scares me for some reason. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only person who has had a student go to the wrong dismissal area. And then somebody says, well, where is so-and-so? And you're like, well, they're supposed to be here. And I don't know where they are because they're not here. And I was trying to do this. And then I don't know where they went. So um, it's just an extra layer of security that makes me feel more comfortable. Um, another thing that you can do is you, um, in the mornings when the students first get there, um, you would have things on the tables to do that don't have an end point. So um, like not a coloring page necessarily because what do they do when they're done coloring? Or a puzzle because what do they do when the puzzle's over? And then they're just sitting there waiting for you to handle the things at your door and take attendance and all of that. Um, and they won't just sit there. They'll, well, some might, but they'll get out of their seats. They'll go to other tables. They'll do that. So I like to leave out activities that have no end point. And so just depending on what you have in your classroom, um, those are pattern block cards. You know, you just put a big pile of them on the table and they, you know, at their table and they will play with it pretty much as long as you need, as long as you give them the time to do it. So there's that idea. Basically, I'm like, saying to like take it slow and give yourself some grace because you can't you realistically can't do 27 handprints on the first day of school um, if you want to make a keepsake do something like a photo um, we have an adorable chalkboard background for the first day that makes an amazing just printed photo that you can send home um, that's something I personally like to do. I would always take photos in the mornings. Um, I would find a time to give them a little task to do. And then I would take their picture in the morning. And then I would try really, really hard to print them at lunch or my prep time. So that way I could send something home with them or email uh, my family's a picture or a keepsake. Um, just, you know, kinder, I don't know about you guys, but kindergarten warms my heart. And so I want my parents to feel that. I don't want my students to come to school and just go home and be like, well, what'd you do on the first day of school? And they're, we all know they can't answer that. Um, that's another thing. I wouldn't necessarily focus on it the first day, but at the end of the day, I would always literally like feed them. What did we, what did we work on today? And they would share. So that way when they get home, they know things to say. Um, I also have sent home little bags of popcorn with just a little wrapper on it that says, um, I forget what the poem, I wrote like a little poem, but it's, uh, it's basically, I had a pop in first day, let's talk about it. And so I send the popcorn home with the students and they can all pop the popcorn and talk about all the fun they had during the day. And then sometimes I'll also um, have popcorn at school at the end of the day. So that way we can talk and eat about all the fun things they did. So it kind of is almost like a an extra trigger. Oh, I ate popcorn and we talked about all the things and then it gives them the um, things that they can talk about at home too because they remember from the popcorn. I don't know, just another crazy idea. So that's it. Take it slow. Don't over plan. Um, I literally got to the point where I would just have two or three activities, maybe four books, and I would have my, you know, my schedule laid out and then I would just pull from those as I saw fit instead of scripting the day and and trying to I want to do this at 10 and this at 11 and this at 12. It's not going to happen. Like, give me a, a thumbs up if you agree with that. It's not going to happen the way that it it's planned. So, you know, make sure that you just have a few things set and ready to go. And you just kind of go with the flow and have fun and do routines and do procedures and teach them what it means to be in school because a lot of them don't even know that. Um, so yeah, so that's what you're going to do the first day, hopefully. Um, you know, you please share with us in the comments, what do you do on the first day of school to make it a magical and memorable day so that um, your students have a blast and your, your parents feel welcome and you don't end the day feeling like 
you are going to fall over. So, okay, wait, wait, wait. You are going to fall over. I was trying to explain to a friend this morning what kindergarten is like on the first day. And I'm like, imagine being so tired that you just can't do anything, like nothing. Like, I mean, there's years where it's been so hot that I literally, after school on the first day, just go lay on a big giant table. And because at that point, my air is down and it's cold. <laughs> and so that adds a little bit of layer of, you know, coldness on my body. And you just close your eyes and you just like, it's like eerie to have silence and calmness. And because it is, it is really, 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 really chaotic the first day. So I don't know. Share with us what you do so that we can all learn from your experiences in kindergarten. And I want to wish everybody a great day back to school and we will see you and be sharing um, more of our tips right here on Simply Kinder. Have a great day, my friends. Bye.